Another edition here of Kransas Corner. Very excited about this one. I see Malik Rozier all the time uh, at the station events and stuff like that. He's on the Canes pregame. He does Canes postgame. He's on the radio during the week. He, he's all over the place. He's also doing great things for athletes. We're going to get into that in just a second. Anyone that's kind of the post-athlete mode of not knowing exactly what they want to do with their life, Malik Rozier and his company, one of the companies you go see for that. But let's talk with let's talk some ball right now. We're a couple weeks into the season. We got Georgia Tech coming up. For the Miami Hurricanes, ACC season starting or really for the Canes at this point. What have you seen through the first month and change of play that you love compared to what you saw last year, baby? And let's start with the offense. And obviously, you can start with the quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, so I think really three things. I think one is toughness. You know, you can see the guys up front moving people, hitting guys. I think that was one thing that I'm um, not saying that we liked last year, but I felt like there was times when we got hit in the mouth, we kind of folded. Um, and you saw it versus a and We went down really quick. We were kind of in a hole. The guys never gave up. The guys continued to, like, like I kind of said it, like, there was a hit by James Williams on their sideline that happened maybe a drive before. And then in the very next drive, Kobe Young catches a ball on our sideline, and he runs over their safety. I think it was, like, 7 to 17. I'm like, oh, we're good. Like, these guys are not ready for this game. We are more physical than, like, when, when you're down and you're still hitting guys, that lets you know that you don't think that you're out. So I think that's one. Um, again, the resiliency of these guys not looking down, not pointing fingers. I think that was stuff that happened last year when things kind of went bad. Someone found someone to blame. I think now you kind of hear Mario talking about it. It's player led. So now when it's like, hey, things are going bad, it's on us now. It, it, it's our it's, it's our job to fix it. Um, and then lastly, I think they're comfortable. I think that they're having fun. Um, obviously, the offense that Dawson has installed plays to the streak, not only TVD in the run game, but everyone from route trees, from understanding, you know, what you can and can't do. Um, so I'm very excited, a little bit jealous because this is the kind of offense that I love to like, if I was being OC, this kind of offense right. that I would try to run. Um, so I'm I'm definitely glad for these guys. And I think it's an offense that these guys will definitely continuously have um, success in. All right. So as a quarterback, like you just said, this offense would be the one that you'd want to be in. You'd want to be the quarterback of this. How much of a difference is what you're seeing this year compared to what was last year kind of thrown at the players and what they were trying to do with Josh Gaddis? Cause I'm not ripping Gaddis. Gaddis won awards. He was assistant coach of the year, like the coordinator of the year. He got everything. And then he came here and it just didn't work. But how much of a difference do you see in a quarterback's eyes of what last year's offense was like for Tyler versus what this year is? Yeah. I mean, it's to me, it's everything. Um, and, and the biggest thing is, is if you're a collegiate quarterback and if you're like a guy like Tyler Van Dyke that has aspirations and that really could go to the NFL and, you know, make a roster, then when you get to the league, the biggest thing that you learn is everything's on you, the protections, the route trees, the run game. And I felt like the year before, and even with Lashley, like Tyler had a little bit of that, like, you know, ability to check and kind of move things. When Gaddis kind of came, it was like, no, this is the play. You got to trust it. It's kind of what we're going to do. And, there's not many teams, I would say, maybe outside the 49ers in the NFL that does that just because of the talent level that they had. It doesn't really matter what they run. They can line up in the I formation and beat you in it. Right. Um, but in college, you kind of got to have that nuance, that ability for guys to check. Like, you know, the the first touchdown Xavier Restrepo had was kind of that. It was a – I don't know if it was a freeze call. Um, you know, sometimes they'll go up there with no play. Like, Cole used to give us, hey, you're going to walk up to a line in red zone. They're going to give you one of three coverages. And based on what they give you, here's one of three plays. And that's kind of what I think, you know, Dawson is doing for TVD because right. the first touchdown to Xavier, that was a check play. You saw them do the check. You saw them go to the line. And, and, and that, to me, is something that when you're trying to be good and you're trying not to have really good defensive coordinators scheme you up and say, hey, what are your tendencies? You got to make it to where it doesn't matter what your tendencies are because we're going our tendencies based on what you show. Um, and that's a lot of stuff that, you know, Dawson's allowing TVD to do. And obviously Tyler's smart enough to pick it up and be very successful in it. Right. And, and you can tell it's working because Tyler feels it. he just looks more comfortable. He just looks happier. He just looks like it's working better for him. And obviously when you're winning and you're putting up numbers, it helps too. And we'll see what happens after a loss <clears throat> if they get to that point and they lose a the game. But it's nice also to see or not hear us talking weekly about the offensive line. Because you know as a quarterback when something's going on with that offensive line – whether and, and the quarterback gets the most. You throw three touchdowns, you're going to be the front page. You throw three interceptions, you're going to be on the front page. Of the paper. <laughs> we get that. But the offensive line, when no one talks about them, that's when they're at their best because we're not worried about them. How good has the offensive line been? And I know Texas A&M has been the biggest challenge and the rest of them, I'm not going to say weren't challenges, but now we're getting into the ACC. But what have you seen so far from the offensive line that you're just kind of happy with at this point? Yeah, you know, I think one, their ability to move. Um, I, as, as much as I watch Dawson, um, offense, and obviously I love them in the pocket, but I mean, there's going to be teams that we play, like we play Florida state, you know, the odds of us locking down Javard Vars for four quarters is going to be right. very hard. 
But if you can throw tunnel screens, if you can get that guy running laterally so get him tired, that to me is the biggest thing that I've at least seen was like when we throw screens out to our receivers, you're having, you know, Mauer go or you're having Cone, you're having these guys 10, 15, 20 yards downfield, burying safeties and linebackers. That's what you want. Um, and obviously they're doing a great job in protecting TVD. Um, and and I, again, I give a lot of that credit to, you know, Mirrorball and Mario. I call the great wall of Mirrorball, um, but also to the recruiting level. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, they're able um, to Inez Cooper. You know, that was a lot of guys of like, hey, he's a three star. He wasn't a highly talented guy, but look at the way they developed him. So right. not only are they doing a great job of recruiting and getting, you know, these highly touted five and four star guys in. But also they're saying, hey, man, we believe in you. We know you have talent. Let me get it out of you. And I think that's also a, a testament of like what they're doing and that, you know, that they're doing the right way. And it just seems so different on campus when you go to a practice or even before uh, in spring ball with the attitude and the mindset of this team. And it all starts at the top with Mario, but he's got great coaches around him too. And that helps out so much. I think it's such an underrated thing that for a long time at the University of Miami, there wasn't a budget to hire all big name guys and this and that. They hired guys that got good coaches down here. But when Mario came down here, the sky was the limit. Bring in who you want, who's going to make us win, who's going to help us win, who's going to develop, who's going to recruit. The mindset has totally changed from what I've seen at Green Tree in the last couple of years. You've been around there for a lot for longer than me, especially on the field. Have you seen that? Do you notice that if you go to practice or talk to the coaches or players that it just seems a little different? Yeah, I, I would say the one thing, and I and I think it was a very similar shift to what Mark Rick did when he first came there, but the right. intensity, the physicality, the saying, hey, I don't care who you are. If you're afraid to hit someone, you will not be on my team. We will sniff that out real quick. Um, I think that's the first thing that you at least see when you fill out there is a physicality intensity level, um, which I love. You know, I think that, you know, obviously you have to protect your players. I think that's one right. thing that, you know, when you talk about guys staying up and not getting tackled. That's the hardest part. Um, but you got to have the physicality part because you'll see it. The the I mean, I, I mean, I saw it versus um, Georgia when when Georgia and Auburn played. They missed Brock Bowers. Three different guys missed them. Right. And some of that can be, you know, they're not wanting to be physical during practice because you don't want to get guys hurt. I think that's one thing that Mario is saying, hey, man, we're going to be physical. Hopefully we can protect you guys, but we're not going to lose that edge that we've created. And, and to me, I think that's something that's going to carry over. And it definitely does help. Same thing as like what I said about the offensive line, I think was one of the hot topics defensively for the last decade there on campus was tackling, mm -hmm. defensive tackling. And we talked almost every week. I remember on the radio, missed tackles and this and that. You want more tackle. And now we're not talking as much about that either. And that is that a mentality approach to the way that Mario and the D and whether it's one of the D Jason Taylor or someone Lance Gidry coming in here and really getting them pumped up. Like what, what, what is the difference there? How does the mentality have to change there for tackling? Cause to me from an outsider looking in for someone who just covered the team for someone who talks and is, is a talking mouth on, uh, about football. I, I got to figure that tackling is one of the first things you learn. How do, how do you unlearn that or have there so many <laughs> issues with that as we've had? But now there's not. But how does that happen? Um, some of it could be the fact – I mean, you see all the times where guys, they literally just don't bring their hands. And I think that's one right. thing that – the shoulder you know, tackle, right. Yeah, right. and I think right. that's one thing that, you know, he's definitely, you know, telling them, hey, guys, bring your hands, make sure to wrap and roll. I know that was one thing that Mandy was really big at, was almost like use the alligator roll. Because once you kind of take their legs off from under them, they can't run no more. So I think you've seen a lot of that. Secondly, I think these guys trust each other. You know, if, if, if I know I'm Cameron Kitchens or James Williams, I have to come down and make this tackle. If I am to miss, I want to know there's going to be three guys right there that's going to make that tackle. And I think right. that's one thing that, you know, at least what I see, especially with the defensive line, um, I kind of talked about it, you know, versus A&M and even Temple. Like they did some screen plays and you're seeing, you know, LT and Ruben Bain 10 yards down the field tracking these receivers down. Um, and I think that's the biggest difference is that, you know, sometimes – um, you're you're going to miss tackles, but the fact that you can trust the guys around you just kind of helps you kind of mentally say, hey, I'm going to go in there and make this tackle. So um, I've been around defensive guys sometimes. They said that sometimes, you know, the biggest thing is, hey, if I know that, you know, if even if I don't get them all the way down, there's going to be, you know, an Artie Burns or, you know, someone else kind of right. helped me tackle in the past. Um, that's kind of what's really helped them, you know, be easy. Shout out to Artie Burns. Great call there. The, the little shout out there. That's stuff right there, right? <laughs> yeah, I love Artie. Uh, anytime you can bring up an old school name like that, I'm good with all that. And it's old school, <laughs> and I say old school, but it's just a couple of years ago, right? But yeah, that's just what yeah. it feels like. And speaking of that, when you were on the squad, did you guys have a lot of like true freshmen, 17, 18 year old kids out there playing? Because it seems like the last couple of years since Mario got here, even before a little bit before Mario, and Manny was still here. If you're 18 years old and you're the best player out there, you're not sitting, you're playing. Did that happen also in your first couple of years? Yeah, it did. Um, but the biggest thing I'll say, and and I think Dawson and Hank's be honest with you, Goodry, um, 
they're smart. It's almost like, you know, if I was a coach at like Miami Central or Chaminade, like your kids are going to be outrageously athletic. The right. worst thing you can do is confuse the kids. So keep it simple, make them play fast. Obviously you can't be so simple that it's almost stupid, um, but you got to be simple enough where like you can basically plug and play anyone, especially to me, the front seven, the secondary is a little different because you got this guy's coverages. You got to have guys look off. But when it comes to, you know, rush lanes, defensive ends, defensive tackles, those guys should get in really fast. Um, especially if you create really good athletes, um, all you're really trying to do is make sure, Hey, how can I create a one-on-one matchup for my Ruben Bain or my LT or my Mesador? Um, and let those guys win. And, and I think those guys have done a great job of winning every time they've had their chance. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's, it's fun to see the young kids out there. It's fun to see the kid who was just like, you just said, Ruben Bain, just one of them that for a couple of years down here, it was like a legendary status. How many sacks he got in high school and <laughs> God, if Miami could just get their hands on him and bring him into campus. And he was one of those guys that I think like sort of from day one, it's I'm, I'm going to be a hurricane. Yeah. I'm going to take the trips or do this or do that. But I'm going to be a hurricane. And I feel like it's changing a little bit like that, but winning does that more than anything. When you win, when you have Mario around and you're winning, that usually changes recruiting. I was shocked that Mario went five and seven and still had one of the best recruiting classes. This, the school's probably ever seen. Were you a little shocked by that, that especially after a losing season that they could bring in big names like that? So yes and no. Um, yes, because, you know, obviously the more you win, it, especially when you're going against Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, all, I mean, all of these schools that right. you know, have in the last 20, 15 years have have won consistently. Um, it is very hard. But to me up front, I think that with Mario's track record, with his ability to put guys in the league, especially if you look at Oregon and how they're functioning right, right now, I think it definitely helps a lot of these guys. I also think the fact that, you know, the university is finally committing so much money and Morris saying, hey, man, we're going to get the best of the best. I'm going to bring in, you know, X, Y, Z guy or X, Y, Z stuff that, you know, maybe we didn't have in the past. So I'll be honest with you, because when I came into Miami, we didn't have an indoor. If it wasn't for Rick, we, we might just now be getting an indoor if he didn't right. donate a million dollars or so right. to it. So it's just like, you know, now that the school is finally saying, hey, we understand the importance of college football. We understand that, you know, for us to be successful and, and not even football, but like all sports to me, I think that you see it at Bama. Football team's good. Attendance goes up. Other sports get better. Obviously, Miami is a private school, so it affects us a little differently. But I definitely think when you look at college sports, if your football team's good, most times the sports, other sports kind of trickle off of it. Um, and I'm just glad that, you know, they're finally donating because I'll be honest with you, there was times where, you know, we had the nutrition center, but it was inside like the weight room closet. Right. Now the nutritionist right. is going to have his own little area <laughs> with everything kind of there. So um, to me, that's the biggest thing is that when you're talking about guys going to Clemson and Alabama and it honestly, you, you look at that facility and it really is like a wow, like this is nice. And, and not saying Miami's isn't, but we're going to get there. That's a lot of stuff. You know, Mario has been saying, hey, we're building a new facility and stuff. So um, to me, I think that helps a lot in recruiting. Um, I don't think that these guys are, are shallow, but when you tell me, hey, I'm going to be getting my smoothie out of a closet or my nutrition is going to have this ginormous facility that he's going to be working out of. Um, especially talking about teams almost being even guys recruiting me the same. Um, there are certain factors like that that definitely make a difference. I don't care if a 17 year old, a five star, a one star, <laughs> a zero star, a negative three star. When you walk in and see some of these facilities that some of these colleges have, at this it's point, crazy. I mean, Malik, I, like, you just, you just mm -hmm. laid out the perfect example of exactly what, the difference in the last decade or two decades of the University of Miami is they were going off reputation. They were going off mm -hmm. wins. They were going off legacy of bringing guys in. And that's really hard to do when you go to Oregon, you go to Alabama, you go to Georgia and Michigan, you walk into a locker room or a facility or the football center. And it's the most incredible thing you've ever seen. Oh, and by the way, here's the athletes dorm also, <laughs> right? Like it, it, yeah. you have, you have to change with times. Otherwise you fall behind it. When you fall behind, it's really hard to catch back up at that point. Um, and, and one more thing, and, and we talked about it a little bit before we started the video here today, what are you doing for, for athletes after, you know, the, the, they're either done in college and they're not going to go pro or after their pro career is over. You just told me a great story before uh, as an example, but tell me exactly what you're doing. Tell the world what you're doing right now for former athletes. Yeah. So I own a company called Miami Millionaires Club and I don't have to be a millionaire to be in it. Um, but long story short, we have a couple ways that people can help. So one, we have NFT sales. Um, they're around a hundred bucks. You know, I don't know if, how much people leave in crypto, but there's a way to use like Apple Pay. Um, 20 bucks also goes to Canes Connect. So we're also trying to help with NIL and things like that. Um, but my biggest passion is more post-grad. Right. Um, you know, helping guys like Cam Harris. So Cam Harris is the perfect example where, you know, he went to the league for a while, had the tryout, didn't really know, hey, what's my next move? Am I going to get a call from the NFL team to get picked up? Um, and so my business partner, Mike Murphy, basically said, hey, man, come work for me at Murphy Auto Group while you're kind of working out. Let me put some money in your pocket. 
And now he's obviously, you know, doing the XFL and doing very fine. But that's really what we're trying to help guys do is kind of that transition period saying, hey, whether you want to work a nine to five, whether you want to, you know, create your own business, whether like there's different things that we can help you with. Um, that's really what we're trying to do. Um, and, and we at some point will help the current student athletes. That's a little different. Um, but we're definitely trying to help, you know, more post-grad kind of find what they want to do because it is very hard. Like most of these sure. guys, especially you go to college, your whole life has been dedicated to football and kind of what you think you're going to be. And then one day it's over with and it's OK. Like, what's my next steps? Kind of who, who can I connect with? Who can help me build? Um, that's kind of what I've been building in Tampa is, is a network of guys that, you know, love one Canes football, but secondly, love helping people out. And I'm sure it also helps, too, when someone comes to you as a former athlete, a former quarterback, a former you know, you know, the prisoner of the game, I guess you could say, because that's how, because you're right. When you're growing up and you're a good athlete or a very good football player, basketball player, that's your life. That's your entire life. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about what happens just in case I don't go pro or if I'm not this all pro. It's and I think it's great that you're doing that uh, for a lot of people, especially ex players that you played with or were around at the University of Miami. I think that's awesome. Also, Malik. This has been fantastic. I want to bother you again, especially when we have like post game stuff to talk about after a game. <laughs> we're, we're now four games in. The Canes are playing well. This is a nice stretch that they're going to go on right now. But I will bug you again if that's cool. No, that sounds good. Definitely uh, can't wait for it. Good stuff. Malik Rozier here for a special edition of Krantz's Corner. Malik, best of luck with everything you're doing. And like I said, I'll come see you in the pregame, postgame. I know you're all over the place for the radio also. Nah, thank you. I'll definitely see you this weekend. All right. This has been Krantz's Corner with Malik Rozier.